Happy Halloween, my editing friends. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be teaching you some spooky title effects that will be useful beyond our beloved Halloween holiday. If you're ready, let's jump on in. <laughs> So in version 25.5 or above of Premiere Pro, there's now 90 new plus effects and transitions that can help you create really fast, neat titles. So today I'm going to show you how to make two unique titles and how to turn them into motion graphics templates that you can reuse in future projects. If you join my Patreon, you can access these project files for free. I'll put a link down below. All right, so I have a new sequence open here and let's go ahead and click on the type tool here to type out some spooky text. Now I'm using a font from Envato called Might Night and I'll also link to this below. They have a ton of great Halloween fonts. The font type that you use for kind of thematic titles is really important, right? So let's go ahead and center this and then also use the align and transform tools to align it horizontally and vertically. This just made, as we zoom in, a tiny little title here. So we can make this longer just by pulling this out. So this is our graphic layer that we can now add effects to. Let's go to the effects panel and let's search for wiggle and let's drag and drop it. So now immediately we get this kind of wiggle happening, but we need to customize it. So let's go to effect controls. Let's make this window just a tad bit bigger here. So it's gonna be easier to work with. And as we scroll down, we're given some more controls here. So we can control the range for both horizontal and vertical. So right now it's at five. If you want it to be more wiggly, like with more range, you can change it to 10, for example, and this will move in greater increments. So it's more noticeable. You can also make it like two, and that's gonna be a little bit smaller of a wiggle, right? So let's keep ours at five. You can also choose to have uh, your wiggle ease in and ease out, which just creates this nice curve on the effect. So you can play around with that. So now this is what it looks like. The wiggle is good, but we have a lot more to do here. Let's search for the grow effect. And let's double click to apply it to our clip. Now, when we play this back, you can see it starts to get way too big right towards the end as I get here. So what I'm gonna do is go to effect controls now and right now we're underneath the grow effect controls. And as we scroll down, I wanna change it from continuous to destination. And this will let us have an initial scale, which I want to be smaller, let's say 50%. And then I want the target scale to be 100. So the destination means that depending on the length of the clip, that will be the scale at the end. So here it's at 100 and here it's at 50. So now it's scaling from 50 to 100 over the course of the duration of this clip, but we need to make it more spooky. So let's go to effects and let's search for echo glow and drag and drop it on the clip. And immediately what this does is it kind of echoes the edges, but it's kind of hard to read, right? And by the way, I wanna mention that all of these effects were a part of Film Impact before, but Adobe acquired Film Impact, so now all the effects are built in, which is awesome. So we need to make some customizations to our echo glow effect from effect controls. So the first thing is I wanna reduce the number of steps. So all these repetitions here are the steps. So we can change this to four, for example. So now it's already easier to read. Another thing we'll wanna do is increase the offset. So that way it kinda of looks like ghosts are hovering around our main text, but we still need to make it a little bit easier to read. So what we can do is we can increase the softness of the echoes. So as we increase this, they become a bit more blurry. And you know, you can play around with this. Another thing that you can do is play around with the highlights. So as we reduce this, the highlights in the center of the text uh, become more visible, making it harder to read. But as we increase this, it actually makes them a little bit more transparent, which is what we want, right? So 
around 78, 80 is good. This is what it looks like so far. And I love that it's starting to look kind of like a spooky ghost, right? That's what I want here. But we can also animate the intensity over time to go from, right now it's at 80%. Let's say we want it to go from 80 to 40, 80 to 40, 80 to 40. So we need to do some keyframing, right? So let's actually expand our effect controls panel here. And this is going to make our program panel smaller and that's fine. And then we can push this in so we have more space. So to create our first keyframe on intensity, just click the stopwatch and then move forward a bit and change it to 40. Go forward a bit and change it to 80. Then back down to 40. And I'll just repeat this until the end. Now, if you're making this as a template, you're gonna wanna make this longer, right? So I'm gonna make mine about 10 seconds in duration. So that way I have you know, enough duration to work with if I ever want to reuse this in the future. So. I'll just go ahead and repeat these keyframes until I reach 10 seconds. So I finished the keyframes here and let's see how this looks. So now you can see the intensity is going up and down, kind of making it more dynamic, right? So those echoes are getting brighter and less bright over time because we're controlling the intensity here. So I think this is looking really good, right? But before we turn it into a motion graphics template, let's say you want it to fade in and fade out. So what we can do here in the beginning is we can animate our opacity. So let's go ahead and go back to effect controls and let's close our effects here. So that way we can get to opacity. Now you might be like, well, Gal, why don't you just use a cross dissolve? Well, as of now, transitions are not able to be packaged with a motion graphics template. So if we added a cross dissolve, that wouldn't be visible in the template itself. But if you use opacity to go from zero to 100%, then that will appear in our template. So to do that, we're gonna move, like let's say we want it to be about a little bit less than one second. So I have a 30 frame per second timeline and right now I'm at 29 frames, so that's perfect. So we can set a stopwatch here at 100 and go back to zero. And so now it goes from zero to 100 right? And we can do the same at the end. Create a keyframe, just click on this keyframe to add one, and then go to the end, and then bring it down to zero. And you can adjust this slightly. Now, if we bring this back out again, and make this a little bit bigger, then we can take this little blue handle and create a responsive animation. So it's going to encompass our opacity keyframes. So that way, if we ever change the duration, these stay the same. We can do the same at the end here, just like that. Now it's also going to encompass the keyframes that we did here on the echo glow effect. So let me show you what's going to happen. Inside our timeline, you can now see that we have these handles, translucent white handles, which contain these opacity keyframes. So now it will always stay the same this intro fade in and the outro will stay the same as well, no matter what duration that we make, which is really, really cool. So to turn this into a motion graphics template that you can reuse over and over, right click, export as motion graphics template, and then you're going to change it to whatever name that you want. I'll just call it spooky, save it to local templates folder and press OK. And now inside of our graphics templates panel, which you can find underneath window, graphics templates, we now have our spooky motion graphics template that you can drag and drop and reuse in any future video. It will always be stored here, which is super cool. And the keyframes and all of the effects came with it because inside a properties panel, it now contains all these effects on top of our text, which is so cool. So now let's show you a second title effect, but first, I'm Kelsey and welcome to Premiere Gal. On this channel, we post weekly video editing tutorials. And if this video has helped you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. And as I'm talking here, I just realized that my microphone is covering up the makeup 
that I did on my neck here. So I just wanted to show you that I did like the little bones on the neck. So hopefully you guys enjoy the makeup here and take these tools beyond just the Halloween uh, tutorial. I also wanna thank today's sponsor. This tutorial would not be possible without the support of Envato. Envato has millions of creative assets that you can use in your video projects from stock video, music, video templates, sound effects, and much more. In fact, that Halloween gal logo reveal that you saw at the opening of this video is a template from Envato. I just downloaded it, I replaced my logo, made a few tweaks, and done. In fact, there are tons of Halloween and spooky templates available on Envato, and for any holiday for that matter, they have pretty much everything. And I put together a collection of some of my favorite title templates and put a link down below. And they also have Gen AI tools as well. You can generate video, graphics, and sound just using text prompts. Let me show you a couple examples. Let's type in bats fly at a camera from a cave. Let's enhance it and generate. And now let's generate a sound effect. Let's type in bats flying in a cave. Generate. And here's the result. That's pretty awesome. And they have unlimited video generations until October 31st. So definitely take advantage of that. You can use my link below to get unlimited creative asset downloads for one affordable price. Thanks so much to Envato for sponsoring today's video. And now let's show you another title effect. So for the second title effect, I already have typed out the word horror, and I'm using a font called Horrier Time. Now, one thing you might not know about appearance is that you can change it from a solid color to a gradient. So make sure that you have your text layer selected. I just like double click to select all the text and then go to fill, click on this and change it from solid to linear gradient. And let's change this from a dark, ish red color like this and then let's select our stop color here the end color to kind of a brighter red color like so and you can use this to adjust how much of that dark you want first and then press ok so now it looks like this and we have this kind of nice darker fade at the top and you can play around with the color until it looks right for you now let's add some effects so let's go to effects panel and let's search for camera shake. This is a bit different than the wiggle. It gives you more of a handheld effect. So let's drop this. So this is what it looks like. You can see it already looks really cool. It's a bit different than the wiggle. And you can see that the camera shake effect was applied here above the text and properties. And you can control the camera shake effect from effect controls. So you can see here as we scroll down that there's a few things we can change. You can change it from one handed completely still, slow walk, fast walk, or earthquake. So let me just show you fast walk here. This is gonna make it look a lot more wiggly, right? Cause it's a fast walk and it's gonna scale in a bunch too. There's also earthquake, which is really shaky. So you can really have a lot of fun here playing with these different effects. This also looks pretty cool for a horror title right here, you know, cause it looks like somebody's kind of carrying the title, but let's go ahead and just keep it at one handed cause we're gonna add some more effects here. I just want it to be subtle. So now I wanna add some grunge texture and effects. Now there's not a grunge effect yet, but there is a grunge transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a cut point here right in the center well, about in the center. We can, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Press C and click here at the playhead to make a cut. So now let's add a transition. So let's search for grunge. And this is available underneath video transitions, grunge impacts underneath distortions. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that here. And then we can extend this to make it longer. So now it kind of looks like this grunge effects, right? And that looks pretty cool. And what we can do is we can also add a grunge effect at the beginning because it's a transition, right? There's a little one here and another one here. So now we have this grunge fade in and then kind of a grunge effect happening in the center and then at the end. And we can customize this so you can select it and then you can go over here again to grunge impacts and you can choose a wiggle amount. Maybe we don't want it to be as much. We can reduce this to three. We can adjust the wiggle scale, make it a little bit bigger. We can increase the amount of grunginess, amount of scratches, amount of dirt, 
detail. We can adjust some color if we want to. So let's see the result here. So because it's a transition here, you can see that it kind of fades out, right? And we don't want it to fade out too much. So we can adjust the master here down to like 70. So now it doesn't fade out as much. It just fades out slightly, which I kind of like, kind of like going in and out of darkness. So let's extend this out a little bit here. We can press shift to drag the end of our transition to meet the other one, like so. And let's see the result. Nice. I think that looks really good. Another thing you can do is move this up to video layer two and you can add a thunderstorm video clip that I got from Envato. You can also generate your own and drag it here. This is actually in a 4K resolution. We're working in a 1080p. So you want to make sure to fit it from the properties panel to fit to frame. So it's the correct resolution here. We can also just cut this at the end and we can add a little fade and a fade out. Now, the only downside here is that, you know, because we're using transitions, transitions don't translate to motion graphics templates. So we can't make this a motion graphics template. You can just turn the text with the shake into a motion graphics template, which you can right click on export as motion graphics template. And then it will appear in your graphics templates folder that you can use in the future. Now this only has the camera shake on it. It doesn't have the grunge transitions. I hope in the future that this will carry over, but for now you can always just go to effects and drag and drop the grunge impact onto a cut point. That's how it works. But as a workaround, what I do, if I ever want to use this plus the background in the future without having to, you know, recreate it from scratch, I can just save this title effect inside of a sequence and save the Premiere Pro project and then just open up that Premiere Pro project and drag it into my current project. Just copy the effects into the timeline that you're using. It's that simple. That's what I do. So yeah, this is the second title effect. I hope you found these tips useful and you can carry it forward into your future workflows. If you want to learn more from your pro title effects, you can click right over here to go check out a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out too, because it helps support the channel when you do that. That's all for today's video. Happy October, fall, Halloween, uh, or just happy editing if you're watching this in the future. Um, and yeah, keep creating better video with gal. <laughs>